Hi and welcome back. If it's your first time here, you're certainly in for treats. Before we begin, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you would like to share video links that you find relevant to this platform, there's information that I've provided at the end of this video in which you can do so. I invite you to join me in this red flag countdown of potential narcissistic interactions, connections, etc. It'll be fun. Let's do this. Stay tuned. Chat with you soon. Meeting Kenny Anderson. Wow. <laughs> I was um, in a development deal with MTV and they flew me to New York to do a show called MTV Jams with Bill Bellamy. And there was a guy who played for the New York Knicks um, and he was having a party. And I decided to go to the party with my cousin. And you know, people were in there milling around and I'm standing drinking and Kenny walks in. I don't know him from a can of paint. And I guess he didn't like the fact that I didn't know who he was. So he came up to me and he said, um, I'm Kenny Anderson. Okay. And he said, you don't know me? And I said, no. And he said, well, you've been living in a cave? And I said, no. <laughs> you know, like, get out of my face. You know, I'm trying to enjoy this party. You know, and uh, I walked off. I stepped off. And when I left the party, he pulled up on the side and he said, uh, can I take you anywhere? And I said, no, I'm fine. I'll take the train. And he said, well, can I at least get your number? One day he called and he said, you like basketball? And I said, no, I'm not really into sports. And he said, because I'm going to the game. And I said, okay. And he said, well, you want to come? And I said, well, yeah, I'll go. And he said, okay, I'm going to send a car for you. So he sent a car and they took me to the Meadowlands because he was with the New Jersey Nets. And I went up, got my little ticket, went to my seat, and I'm sitting in the stands, and I'm looking around, and I'm like, when is he going to get here? Like, he just got me sitting up in this game. I didn't even want to come here. And then I heard the announcer say, Kenny Anderson. And I was like, oh, my God. You know, and so it was one of those moments. And so, you know, I waited for the game to be over, and I just ended up sitting there. And the people were sweeping. Nobody else was in the place. And they finally came over to me and said, well, who are you waiting on? And I said, Kenny Anderson? And they said, he's gone. So <laughs> he left me sitting in the arena because he thought I knew to come down to the tunnel. So he said, look, I'm going to come back and get you. And so uh, he drove all the way back to the arena to pick me up. And we went on our first date by me sitting in the stands by myself at one of his games and uh, having dinner afterwards at a place called the Shark Bar in New York City. I think the biggest difficulty with dating an athlete, uh, for me in particular, was because they want you with them everywhere. <laughs> you know, and I, I let Kenny convince me that, um, you know, I didn't need any of that. I didn't need to do any of that because it wasn't until I had my oldest daughter, Lyric, that it's like, well, now, Daddy, I can't be concerned with you because we have a baby, so I got to stay home. And then that's when the groupies entered our relationship. There was a young lady that Kenny was with and had been with even before he met me. And this young lady just would not go away. <laughs> she was going to be around. One night, Kenny was on the road, and something inside of me was like, something's going on, I feel like something's going on, and I called his room, and he didn't answer. And I was like, now, Kenny, you don't sleep that hard. You know, answer the phone. Called back. He didn't answer. So I said, well, let me call the hotel and ask for her. And I called back and they said, hold on and put me through. And 
I got on the phone with this young lady and I said, let me talk to Kenny. And he got on the phone and he said, I'm going to go back to my room and I'm going to explain something to you. And I waited and he did call back. And when he called back, that's when he told me that that young lady was pregnant. I think I cut up all this, all of his stuff, and I slashed all the tires, and I threw the big screen TV over the balcony because I didn't know what to do. But I knew that the man that I loved and the family that I thought we had was now um, was now no more. Really, you know, it was in jeopardy because now there's somebody else that has to be a part of this situation that I didn't plan on. Um, so that's that's how I found out that he had a child while we were in our relationship. But I always knew that he had a daughter with uh, DJ Spinderella. They had had a relationship long before I came into the picture and had already had their daughter. And when we got together, you know, Spin was very, you know, as accepting as she could be because I'm sure for her she wanted to be the wife and be with him as well. You know, you have a baby with somebody, you expect to spend the rest of your life with them. Um, but she was very, um, you know, respectful. And so we've never had an issue. But that other bitch, that other bitch file. My relationship with Kenny's uh, spanned over seven years and um, Unfortunately, once I found out that he was, you know, sleeping around with other women, uh, he made my skin crawl, for lack of a better analogy. And I didn't want him touching me. And there was uh, an incident that occurred in front of my daughters, because I had both daughters at this time, where he put his hands on me. And um, I said, nope, nope, nope. This is not how this is going to go down because I do have two girls and I don't want them being in a household where they see this, witness this, and think that this is okay. And so the next day I got on a plane and I flew to New York because that's why I thought I had to go for my divorce lawyer child. I thought I had to go to New York to get the, get the coin. And uh, it wasn't. <laughs> Everybody told me that prenup was ironclad, and I was basically leaving with what I came with, and I was okay. Give me what I came with and my daughters, and I'm out. My biggest help during that time was my mother. She basically came on board and helped me raise my two daughters in light of their, their dad's absence. And I'm just, like, I can't, I can't talk about my mother enough, because if it wasn't for her, I don't know where I would be where my daughters would be, you know, but that woman anytime, oh my God. Let me get it together. Anytime I called my mother, she was present and available for me, no matter what was going on in my life. And if it wasn't for her, I don't, I don't know where me and my daughters would have been. You know, because she was really the backbone for our family. And so she basically helped me regroup and get myself together to be able to be a proper mother to my daughters.